Okay, let's uh, talk to Ramat Baba from FMDQ Exchange Place. She's the chief dealer in charge of fixed income at uh, FBN Quest Merchant Bank. Good morning, Ramat. It's good to see you. Rama, come in here. Good morning, Busain. Good. It's good to see you again in the, in the week. We're just trying to wrap up the month of July. So give us your take as we uh, take this second to the final trading day. It's Tuesday. Um, so yes, second to la almost second to last trading day. Okay, so um, really this week market has been super quiet, especially on treasury bills and bonds. Um, on treasury bills, we saw a bit of sales, and I think that's just profit taken by a few people as we draw them um, come closer to the end of the month. On bonds, market has been really, really inactive. However, we've seen a few one or two demands coming in for the 10-year bonds, especially for the 2029 maturity specifically. And I think that's because at the bond auction last week, the CBN um, offered 50 billion of that maturity. However, just 7 billion was sold. So of course, there's been a lot of de demand coming in. There's really no interest for the, even the maturities around it, which is maybe the 28s, the 27s. No, it's been more of the 29s that um, demand has been coming in for. Um, so really, there's been nothing much happening. Yeah, uh, is there going to be a bit of a rebalancing of the books, as it were, uh, between today, tomorrow, and the later part of this week, which takes us into the new month of August? I don't think so. However, there is a Treasury bill auction tomorrow. 223 billion is on offer. Same amount is actually maturing, so that has absolutely no impact on liquidity. I think the only place there's been a bit of change this week has been on the, in the morning market, and that's because last week we saw the market trading above 16 percent levels because of the tight liquidity as well as the um, intervention by the CB, and that's for the retail um, secondary market intervention auction. As a result, market traded above 16 percent. But yesterday, fact funds came into the system, almost 400 billion. And of course, as a result, rates tanked, and we saw market trading at about 5%, 6% levels. Yes, I was about to ask, where is the FAC money? I thought you folks are going to share the money this week, and it's going to hit your system. But now you just told me. So with FAC in, uh, and then you have the uh, private market auction by the central bank. So where is the maturity taking place, uh, mature treasury based on Thursday, which is the 5th of August? Yes, about um, 88 billion is maturing on Thursday. So, of course, everybody's just waiting on the side to see is the CBN going to mop up or is the CBN just going to let the funds come into the system. But, of course, again, the system liquidity is just about 292 billion. Yes, that's liquid, but it's not so much liquidity as we speak because in another two weeks, there will be another retail intervention which will take out funds again. So. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Yeah, well, if you guys decide to go a little bit quiet or super quiet, as you put it, before the month ends, I'll go that way with you. Thank you so much, Ramat Baba. Get back to business uh, of trading. Thank you so much, the Chief Dealer for Fixed Income at uh, FBN Quest Merchant Bank. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. From FMDQ Exchange Place, let's bring in Temple Ashaju here uh, from the Nigerian Stock Exchange Trading Floor. Temple, good morning. Welcome to the program. Uh, these are, are earnings that some could make you cry and some, well, could make you smile. Good morning, Temple. Morning, Bosun. Well, <laughs> it's shocking to investors, actually. Yes, it's, again, it's, it's, it's shocking. Quite a number of investors actually expected it. Yes, look at Okomo Oil, look at Total right. Nigeria quite PLC. A of yes, one on oil and gas, in oil and gas, the other in palm oil, not particularly good numbers. Then you look at the Angote Cement as well, uh, taking a bit of a beating in some of the numbers. Uh, it's not looking good. But, but Nestle actually shining through. Uh, it looks like this, has, this is where the market really is. Uh, baby food, baby things, golden morn, a few other things. That's not at the bacteria. It looks like that is where uh, the business really is. If you're doing oil and gas and palm oil and what have you, it looks like uh, it's a very tough time. Let's start with uh, the, the brick and mortar, the Angote Cement. This is the Q2 numbers. Earnings per share was up, but if you drill down uh, a bit, that was not looking too good. The group revenue was also a bit down. What are you... Uh, do you have some flesh on this? Uh, well, I think it's due to the uh, loss that they are recording in terms of market share in the Nigerian market. Uh, because if you look at those metrics very well, uh, analysts have reported that the, the declines both came from both Nigeria and the Pan-African market, of course, but more from uh, the Nigerian market where you had some 6.2% uh, decline in the volume of uh, our sales, you know, this period. 
and of course uh, if you look at what they are doing compared to uh, what the uh, the market you know poses in terms of price they've really really reduced I think by some 0.8 percent for the Q2 period uh, but when you again when you look at the H1 numbers the uh, uh, half, half year first half 2019 if you put that together they look quite positive you recall that when the uh, Q1 numbers came out this year it looks like they were making a bit of recovery uh, that was for the first quarter of the year so that seemed to be one of the uh, key metrics that has aided the uh, H1 performance for Dangote Cement uh, but the other thing we know that is that they've been able to record some uh, improvements in the area of energy costs. Uh, they've been able to save some more costs in that regard. If you look at what they've done in Tanzania where they installed some kind of gas turbine, that is really helping them. They're beginning to leverage uh, coal as well for some of the plants. So that has reduced uh, some of the uh, implications that that would have had or created in that uh, segment of their business. But when it comes to operating expenses, that rose year on year by 15%, uh, given what their numbers are saying. And of course, uh, I think investors are generally concerned about the kind of negative impact that the net finance had on their numbers. Okay, a tempo, a tempo quick one. Let's uh, uh, touch on something else. We'll talk about uh, Nestle a little bit. We, we don't have much time. I take us through Nestle numbers. Look, their revenue is up. And yeah. It looks like all the numbers look very decent, isn't it? At least at, uh, at first half of the year. Oh, uh, yes, yes, both. And they've been able to... Sure, sure. Cost of sales for them reduced this time. They didn't have to do so much of marketing. So that came down by some 4.8%. Uh, that's what the numbers say. If you look at the administrative cost as well, they were able to put that seriously uh, under control. That's, you recall, that you see that that actually fell uh, marginally by some 0.61%, which is a plus for them. And their earnings per share uh, also rose by some 33, uh, rose to 33 Naira, uh, 11 Kobo. It's something that if you check the numbers of the uh, transactions we saw in the market, yesterday uh, that moved the Nestle moved up some 0.77 percent so we're getting some positive uh, reactions to that oh and oh uh, and numbers are uh, also through uh, to everyone uh, net profit down 15.6 percent uh, they try to balance the book borrowings is also down some of the positive readings say that all production is down I'm oh, sorry up I beg your pardon eight percent uh, during the period under review, and they hope to see more of that helping them upstream business uh, to keep moving on. Mm. I think it's mainly the debt recovery, uh, debt or debt, strat debt reduction strategy that they are. Uh, concerned about at O and O. That's what they are focusing their energy on this time so that they can reward investors uh, by the end of 2019. And of course, that has paid off. Uh, you recall that they have some uh, one of 14 billion naira payments, uh, which I think affected their top line in a way. Uh, for the debt reduction since 2014, when you look at the upstream, it's been reduced by some 72%, all the way from $801 million. And um, Mr. Wale Tinubu has confirmed that that will continue to go on until the end of the year. Uh, looks like uh Whatever happens with the SEC, whatever, this company is moving on and is determined to keep uh, the job or the business of EMP going. Yes, check out through the market numbers today. We'll get back together and continue to choose some of these earnings coming through. Thank you, Temple. Do have a great day. Thanks, both. Okay. So let's uh, uh, put a stop there. We'll back tomorrow. Tomorrow is the final day in the month of July, and we have an interesting package for you. Let's uh, leave it there for today, everyone. We thank you. Our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. This is Channels Television, Nigeria's news leader. I'll see you again tomorrow.